What's up, cinephiles? I hope you guys are doing well. For today, we are going to review Netflix's latest true crime documentary series, Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness, directed by Eric Good and Rebecca Checklin. You know what? I think this is the biggest distraction out there that we can have. This documentary has three subtitles in it. It has Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. And at the center of it, we have Joe Maldonado, a.k.a. Joe Exotic, a.k.a. the self-proclaimed Tiger King, who's such an eccentric character. In his own words, he's a gun-toting, polygamous, gay. This series is just about the interconnected workings of what it means to be an animal breeder. And this series is surrounded by more eccentric characters. We have the main rival of Joe, Carol Baskin, who owns the Big Cat Rescue. We have Bhagavan, another animal breeder, and his harem of wives. And then we also have Jeff Lowe, a Hollywood swinger who uses cubs as a way to get into parties and attract women. So this series is a lot to unpack. Phil, why don't you start off first with your initial impressions uh, so given the times that we are in right now uh, i completely agree with what you just said this is the perfect distraction this is a very entertaining documentary and it is mad man it is crazy things that are happening here is just really insane uh many people in this documentary are eccentric characters and i would like to say for me they're not just eccentric characters they are just terrible terrible people <laughs> and you just see this terrible people going against each other for the first episode you're gonna think that one side is somewhat of a good person but you're gonna find out down the line that she's not entirely really innocent either that's one of the most entertaining aspects in this documentary is that each person involved in this crazy story is besides not innocent they have so much dirt against each other that they kept throwing against each other kevin i just i still can't get over how crazy this documentary is you know what i agree uh every time there's a confessional or there's an interview whoever's talking in that particular moment is just throwing dirt to the other person and the same goes for that other person so it just only speaks the morally ambiguous weird world that we live in these directors they can easily turn this into a true crime theme but you know uh fusing it that reality tv it really makes for a compelling and gripping television it's almost feels like a guilty pleasure way like are these characters real but then when you're shown the footages the testimonials the phone recordings this actually happened and these characters exist in this world it's such a complicated mess it's a huge pile of mess it all starts with episode one i think it's more about animal rights as the series progresses those tigers they're constantly on screen but they quickly fade into the background the main attraction here are the characters here it's about the power struggle the vanity pursuit for fame it's comedic and tragic at the same time i was questioning on the first episode like it feels too unfocused where is this series going we are so introduced with so many plot lines i just realized as i continue to watch that whole tone of the film is just a mess it definitely switches from humorous to really something dark if you're an animal lover or if you're that kind of activist fighting for animal rights you're really gonna have a tough watch here this series is really gonna anger you because like what you said at the beginning you're gonna think that this series is really going to the direction of having a message about animal rights but then the animals they kind of got neglected when the crap hits the fan when things get really complicated when they were having their fights their legal battles for the power so who should end up with the zoo very quickly the animals are just something to be used use for so that they can earn their money it became about capitalism really really fast that is going to really upset all those animal lovers out there but really in terms of true crime documentaries uh, my favorite true crime of documentary of all time excluding the movies is making a murderer and the keepers i don't think that this series really reaches that height in terms of engrossing you into this story but man kevin man this is just really entertaining watch that you can't help but even though 
know that it's not really deep. Everything crazy just keeps you hooked about this series and you just can't stop playing that next episode. Yeah, I agree. When it comes to the portrayal of the crime, it's not exactly as mind-boggling and as groundbreaking as the other crime documentaries that you've probably seen. But what makes this outstanding is really uh, the infusion of the dark humor and really the choice of the directors to paint this interconnected world of big cat breeders where each one have their own share of betrayals and double crossing in this big industry. This documentary doesn't really lean on to either of the characters and you can clearly see that there is hypocrisy playing on on these characters. It's just a surface level that these seemingly caricatures but they are real people. Joe Exotic, he's a moonlight country singer. He makes these silly music videos and he does these violent death threats against his main rival Carol Baskin who's the self-proclaimed Mother Teresa of the Cats but on the other hand looking at the conditions of her zoo it's clearly subpar and there's also tied rumors about the disappearance of her husband of how she allegedly fed her husband to the lions the series is very much self-aware that these characters have their intention to preserve wildlife and as their ambitions and jealousy drive them it suddenly became about money and power i felt like there's a big paradox while i'm watching this you're watching a series about them exploiting animals but then does it mean you're also patronizing that exploitation by watching that series and also so I can think of Joe Exotic as the metaphorical tiger here that he's the one being exploited like all his dirt is thrown for the public to see but I guess that's the nature of every documentary that you have to lay it all out. By the way, I also want to commend the documentary filmmaking because if you think about it, the narrative happening here is not really all too meaty compared to others. The documentary filmmakers edited this documentary into something of an entertainment entertaining watch. They really made use of all these eccentric characters uh, showing off those silly music videos and making all these eccentric characters kind of pose for the camera. I think it's very silly. We can all agree it on that. But I don't think this is shallow by any means. You can see this zoo animal world being the microcosm of the greater world. It felt like a bit tad longer. Yes, I felt that. Some of these storylines felt loose and towards the end you still have a lot of questions but episode by episode it kept on subverting your expectations. It kept on dropping these bombs. Maybe those things don't really matter in the large scale of things but I like to think of this series as a character study of the Tiger King, Joe Exotic. Well, uh, it's not that I'm saying that really it's shallow. Uh, I get all your points but it just came to a point that it's a bit of a frustrating watch for me because ultimately it ended up being a fight between these very terrible people and I agree okay. with what you said to your point. Seven episodes, I think they could have this to four <laughs> or five okay i totally get what you're feeling that by the end of this series you felt like you ate junk food because you're asking what's the nutritional content you're gonna get from this and going back to the point that maybe this could have worked better with shorter episodes i can't really blame the directors however because they have a lot of salacious content to be put in here and that's something really hard to resist. And if that's gonna make noise, then good for them. So should we conclude? Yeah, go Kevin, go ahead. As I've said, Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness is probably the crazier thing you're gonna watch aside from the crazy thing that's happening right now in the world. It's a fascinating character study. It feels tragic and comedic at the same time. And you know, I didn't really expect for the reality TV element to work well with a crime aspect of it. You know, it has a lot of things to say. Some of them might get lost in the way. Some of this won't sit well with the viewers, but I can guarantee for sure that this bizarre thing is nothing that you've seen before and it really kept me hooked. I really genuinely felt that there's no bias here because that's a very important element for judging documentary series. So I'm gonna give this a four and a half out of five stars. So in conclusion, Tiger King, would I recommend you to go watch this documentary series? Yeah, of course I would. 
it is very entertaining to watch. You're gonna meet very eccentric characters that you don't even know people like that exist. So many crazy things that are going to happen here is going to amaze you that it can happen in real life. And while it doesn't reach the heights of other true crime documentaries that admittedly that I shouldn't really compare Tiger King against, it's still really gonna keep you hooked and going to give you seven hours worth of pure entertainment. I'm going to give it four out of five stars. If this is gonna be done as a movie, who do you think is best suited to direct this? If you're gonna put me on the spot, the, <laughs> the director that immediately came to mind is Taika Waititi. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? I, 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 th I think Taika Waititi is gonna be a perfect director to direct a film about these very eccentric people because Taika Waititi himself is a very eccentric person. I can also see Quentin Tarantino or Martin Scorsese directing the heck out of this. This is just a gold material for every film production company to work on. So I really hope the legend of the Tiger King lives on. <laughs> Kevin, I can't get over that. You just made me salivate when you mentioned Quentin Tarantino because we all know that he loves to do revisionist history and we can all just imagine what he can do with these tigers and violence. I want that movie now. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Guys, if you've seen this documentary, this really bizarre documentary series, tell us what you think about it. Hit them on the comment section. Who should direct it? Who should star in it? Let us know in the comment sections below. And also, if you like this video, click that like button and subscribe to our channel. Stay safe, everyone. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.